Half in the bag. Fuck movies. That's the first thing that stands out is sort of a nice costume. When you obviously see a movie like, like, like Spider-Man or Batman, the studios paid a lot of attention. Wow. Yeah, you were right. Yeah, he was just terrible. Normally this department frowns upon murder, but in this case, I think I'm gonna make an exception and not report this. Wow, uh, thank you, officer. Yeah, I mean, we thought we were screwed when the Watchmen sold us out. This fucking stupid crime fighter. Murdering an untalented, pathetic loser who wants to be yet another internet film critic is hardly a crime. At least it shouldn't be. In fact, we're glad to have citizens out there like yourselves who are willing to do their part. Yes! More murders! Well, should we head back to the station, Cooper? Actually, sir, I'd like to stay and ask these boys some additional questions. Uh, is there something else we can help you with, officer? You boys live here? Uh, actually, no. This is Mr. Plinkett's house. Yeah, we're a VCR repairman. Are you aware that having more than 12 beer bottles in a non-recyclable container is a violation of city ordinance? You bet. We, we love, love beer. beer. Mm. Are, you, are you wearing that, that new Britney Spears perfume? Oh, yeah, fantasy. Yeah. How the fuck do you know what it's called? No. Nope. Uh, Macy's had a big, uh, big bust earlier. Man, perp. Try to steal panties and really crappy perfume. You do what you gotta do. Tackle the guy. Got perfume all over me. It's part of the job. Love the job. Go, police! Wow. You don't talk like any cop I've ever met before. Yeah. What? You sound more like an undercover hooker to me. You know, if you are and we ask you, you have to tell us, because that's the law. Shit, no! I ain't no hooker. Boo to hookers. I'm a cop. Through and through. What are you, what are you guys doing? Watching the game? Hanging out? We're actually on a four-hour break. Um, we were gonna watch Troll 2. Holy shit! I love that movie! I'm gonna go to get a beer. You guys want anything? Sure. 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 Yeah. 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 She ain't no cop. No. 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 <laughs> Troll 2, man. That's great. I love it. Mm. Hey, you guys are almost out of beer. I had an ice cream party in your kitchen. I hope you don't mind. I didn't even know Plinkett had any ice cream. Oh, he doesn't. I shit in my hand and smeared it all over the floor. Oh my god! Have you seen Troll 2 before? Um, yes, I have. Troll 1 is a movie that came out, I have no idea. Mid 80s. Mid 80s. Yeah. Sonny um, Bono gets turned into a plant in that movie. Yeah. I believe I was at the video store and I saw that there was a Troll 2 and I asked if I could get it and I watched it and I remember vividly thinking the first 15 minutes they put the wrong movie in here. When I was a kid, I had an imaginary playmate, too. But it wasn't your dead grandfather. The first time I watched it, I waited through the entire movie for it to come back around to the troll, yeah. and it never did. Mm -hmm. And I was so confused. There's no trolls in Troll 2. There's no anything <laughs> in Troll 2. It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They turn people into trees and eat them. Grab the pot and drag me out quick! I'll try it. Hurry. I, I saw it when it first came out on video, too, uh, oddly enough. It wasn't advertised, it was just there one day on the yeah. new release wall. I was like, Troll 2, fuck yeah! And you put it in, and uh, the only thing I remembered years later about it was the, uh, I'm tightening my belt so I don't feel hunger pains. And you can't piss on hospitality! I won't allow it! What are you going to do to me, Daddy? Tighten my belt by one loop so I don't feel hunger pains. And your sister and mother will have to do likewise. When I watched the movie as a little kid, I didn't really understand how bad it was, but I remembered that part where I was like, what? What is yeah. happening? Like, people that don't seems... say things like this. And then it, when, when it was released on DVD, I was like, that's the Hunger Pains movie. I remember that. Yeah. And so I watched it again, and it was like uh, wow. discovering a masterpiece. It, it is, was like, completely. Yeah. How did I forget about everything else in this movie? That's yeah. so amazing. And remember. I have a bit of a different perspective on Troll 2. I did not see it until recently. We watched it together with my friend Rich Evans. Who are the goblins? <laughs> the goblins? <laughs> But it was my first time seeing the movie, and it's amazing. It's an amazing film. The first time you watch it, and I noticed this uh, 
you specifically watching that, you, you're not laughing so much at how bad it is, you're more just confused. Yeah. I was like this. And then you realize that you're making that face. Right. You, yeah. you, you, your brain makes that face because it doesn't know what to do with your face muscles. Your brain is so transfixed on trying to figure out what's, what's happening, happening that you lose control. I'm lucky I didn't shit in my pants. No. Please, ma'am, I beg you, uh, what are you gonna do? To, what are you gonna do to me with that? There's bad movies that are technically bad, like like Samurai Cop, where the acting's bad and the story's bad and all that. But like Samurai Cop, like just the editing and yeah. the, the shots, the shots, the, nothing. Yeah, everything's like confusing. And Troll Two is like competently made yeah. for a movie of its yeah. time, but the writing in it and the, the acting is bad. But the writing is is so bizarre. <laughs> Oh. Release your instincts in the bathroom. Are you nuts? You trying to turn me into a homo? Wouldn't it be too hard? If my father discovers you here, he'd cut off your little nuts and eat them. He can't stand you. So lots, lots of subtle things in that movie that just don't make sense. The scene where he gets up and pisses on all the food. I must do it. I must do it. Doesn't the grandpa stop time for him? Yeah. Yes, that's another magical power the grandpa They're has for eat. some reason. Yeah, the grandpa he can, stop, can time. stop time. But only for 60 seconds. They're eating food and it's like green. There's green on the corn. And yes. It's like, what is that supposed to be? Right. No one would eat that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. No normal person would say, okay, well, there, it looks like toothpaste and it's yeah. on the yeah. corn and, and you're like, what? <laughs> what's, what's going on? And it's so fascinating. Why is the daughter starting your dance routine doing this? <laughs> Yeah, that's bizarre. <laughs> One of my favorite crazy ass scenes from this movie is where she's trying to seduce that kid and they eat a cob of corn together. What the fuck? I that, thought that was, was a pretty erotic scene, actually. It was very erotic. <laughs> they had no idea what the fuck they were doing. Just threw a bunch of shit that seemed, you know, stereotypically American into a movie and it has zero continuity, nothing makes sense, and you feel like something's wrong with you because you haven't been able to keep up. But it, <laughs> it's not that way at all. It really doesn't make sense. The movie sense. makes you question your sanity Completely. and your, your comprehension skills. I really think the cover of the film, VHS, completely is a microcosm of this movie. They're not trolls, they're goblins. They don't look like this. Or this. What is that? This isn't a, even a goblin. It's it's a troll doll Looks that like you win doll. at yeah. the roller rink that has glowing eyes. There's a confused kid coming down the stairs in his pajamas, who also isn't anywhere in the film. No. And then an eight foot tall werewolf with a pickaxe. <laughs> it's brilliantly shitty, and I will adore that film for the rest of my life. It's it's the bad movie that everyone can enjoy. It is. <laughs> Troll 2. Hell yeah. It's no box spelled four words. <laughs> well, not Troll 2, but Goblins. Oh. You, you missed the point. God, you're an idiot. By the way, um, Officer, what was it? Cooper. Cooper, Cooper. yes. Oh. Um, I just haven't noticed, you, you wear a lot of makeup for a cop. I do? Yeah. Isn't there some sort of regulation about not looking like a whore when you're on duty? Mm. What's next? 
What do you mean, what's next? Well, you said you had like four hours to kill, so could we watch another movie? Well, we could watch uh, Best Worst Movie, which is the documentary about Troll 2. Holy shit, let's watch that. First, I gotta take a major piss. Can I use your bathroom, or do you just want me to go in the bushes? Wow, that was the most heartwarming movie about irony I've ever seen. <laughs> it was a beautiful film. It right. really was. Mm -hmm. There was a few times that I bald uncontrollably. I was in a movie back in 1989. It's called Troll 2, and it's become known as the worst film of all time. Really? Yes. So we just watched Best Worst Movie, which is a documentary film made about Troll 2. 18 years ago, I got the lead role in my first movie. The movie was directed by Michael Paul Stevenson, who is not the kid on the case for <laughs> Troll 2. There's this movie you've got to see. I've watched it a million times. Thank you all for coming to the fifth annual Los Angeles Troll 2 party. Oh, oh my God, you didn't see it? You haven't seen Troll 2? We're watching it now. That's what people do with this movie. They pass the DVD around like it's Bible. Officer Cooper, what did you think of, of Best Worst Movie? I really adored it. I yeah. thought it was fantastic. There is, you know, sort of that, I don't know, sentimentality to this movie. I saw it a long time ago, so that's probably part of it. But it's just so bad and you feel so bad for the movie. That's why I love the documentary, because they really captured that. It wasn't just, oh, here's a stupid movie that people, and we have no idea why they like it. Look at these crazy people right. that like this weird right. movie. They really it's, captured. It's more affectionate than that. And also, the people in it are completely insane. Yes. That's, I mean. Multiple people that worked on the movie are, yeah. are nuts. I can't imagine how happy he was to go find these people and find out that they had lost their mind. <laughs> I mean, from a director standpoint, that has to really be. I, I, I don't know. The movie seems to try to be affectionate towards all these people. Yeah. It's not like, well, look right. at the crazy people, but they are crazy. Right. They and are. the movie doesn't try to hide that either. So they make noise all night long. And the noise is so intense that sometimes it makes you dizzy. What yeah. does it sound like? What kind of noise is it? <laughs> that is. Wow. Yeah. And they didn't make fun of her, they weren't mean. They just said, here's a crazy person. A little bit. It, it really rides well, that line. Eh, and that's, that's yeah. Little, yeah. It, they kicked the line a little. <laughs> it's <laughs> edited in a it way to where they reveal her. Like, cause they, they don't show her for the longest time. And when right. they do, it's intentional, like, oh. Then they just leave these like long lingering pauses. When she compares Troll 2 to Casablanca. Yeah. She's like, it's the same, same type. It's in the same league. It's and, the same And then same they just linger on her. League. And, as Casablanca. Crazy eyes. Well, they're both movies about people. So the two people that like the film are the two people that are the most insane, her yeah. and the shopkeeper. Yeah. Speaking of the shopkeeper, the moment when he's, he's, it's like, it's kind of sad where he comes out on stage and they're all like cheering. <laughs> I went like this and everybody applauded. I was thrilled. I never was thrilled at being who I was until that moment in, in Manhattan. They're, they're kind of making fun of him. Right. Yeah. Hey, you're that idiot in that yeah. movie. But, but to him, he said it was like, like the greatest right. moment of his so life. So who cares if he does so, it? So yeah, it's, it was those little moments like bet between people that, that mm -hmm. are like, okay, well, and then you feel bad because everyone's cheering wildly for him and they're not really cheering Bloody, for him. Yeah. They're, they're making Bloody fun of really him. Doesn't know. But, but it's like, but it, he felt good about it. Right. So every, all these things come out of a movie. Yeah. The people and their lives is what's most interesting about mm -hmm. Best Worst Movie. Yeah. I, I mean, I really like this documentary. Yeah. Very good, very entertaining because when you were describing it, I thought it was going to be about Troll 2. And, and about like how they made the movie mm -hmm. and how it was like a disaster and all this stuff. Well, that's a part of it. It's but... a very small part. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's more about like all the people that made it and, and it's, it, it gets kind of like psychological mm -hmm. in a way about how everyone responds to this thing, both like negative and positive and how, you know, some people are just kind of confused by it and some people like George Hardy, uh, the actor. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> I don't feel that kind of feeling when I'm drilling a cavity. He relishes the limelight, the, the attention, he loves it. He yeah. loves to be in the spotlight. And so it's, it's kind of interesting on his personality. And then you have the director, Claudio. Do you think that you had the worst movie? I did a very good movie. He really believed in what he was making. I can. He's a director. He's yeah. like an egomaniac. Completely. And um, he loves the attention, but at the same time, it's like a double-edged sword. At the same time, 
he hates that people are laughing at his movie. So he's like, he's very conflicted. He barely even remembers making this film. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't even really know what the hell it was about. But he's furious that these people aren't taking it seriously. Yeah. I really like that the director, too, stayed away from trying to make it all seem like it was easy and good. Well, the, the, yeah, it, it shows that there's the ebb and you know, flow of it. A, a cult following has its place. Right, exactly. You try to expose that to people that have no sort of appreciation or understanding of bad movies. Right. Like when he's going around, when George Hardy's going around his hometown mm -hmm. and trying to promote the screen of Troll 2 to all these locals that... <laughs> it's this really bad movie. Literally, you're going to want to kill yourself when you watch it. You see that poster right there? Uh-huh. Troll mm -hmm. 2. Do you know anything about it? Mm -mm. You don't? Are you serious? <laughs> Oh my God! It's a movie. Yeah, something. it's a movie. Okay. The documentary explores that idea of why something that's bad is, you know, so cherished. Yeah. You know, like it's and it's it, it doesn't try to like find out why. It just sort of like explores that right. idea. Yeah. And there's there's these scenes where like the director comes to the first time to L.A. for a screening, and they're all like, "We love you, man." Oh, too. Yeah. Did you see the movie? The movie. Yeah, it's awesome. What do you think about? It's amazing. It's amazing. But. It's like at the same time, they don't seem to fully understand. They don't really like them, you right. know? Yeah. It's, it, the audience is cheering and like, yeah, I got your autograph. It, it, almost in an ironic way. It's, it's, and, yeah, it's um, all irony. And there's all these different levels of, of like what, how people respond to, to this movie and, and how people like interpret it or their own perception of it. It's, right. it's very weird. Two decades after it was made, Troll 2 is finally finding an audience. It is sold out. For tonight. My friends and I thought we were like the only people in the world who knew about this. Wow. Watching someone else fail miserably is, it, it's, it's almost evil like that, <laughs> that people enjoy that. Right. It's sickening, but at the same time, it's wonderful. It is. That, that's that's like the psychology wonderful. behind it. Yes, yes. Uh, this movie also contains one of the greatest moments of a person's sort of self-realization mm. ever caught on camera which is when George Hardy is at the horror convention. Oh, right. Oh my God, this, this, is, this, folks are weird. I mean, this is not Halloween. This, what's today's day, March that night? It's March, yeah. It's freaking weird. These folks are just, they've lost it. And he's talking about all oh, the washed yeah. up horror actors that are there signing autographs for a movie they did 20 years ago. And he's like, don't they have anything better to do? And he's like, then I thought, don't I have anything better to do? It's like, oh, he kind of gets yeah. it, finally. Yeah, he kind of goes through a journey mm -hmm. of, of discovery. On camera. Mm -hmm. he, he, he doesn't know, you know, he realizes what Troll 2 is and that it's, you know, and then he tries to like capitalize off it yeah. for his own ego. And, and then he kind of realizes, okay, well, you know, I've seen it 20 times by now. I'm sick of this shit. Well, that's the amazing thing about this movie is that uh, throughout it, you get to know a lot about George Hardy and you get to learn his aspirations when he was young. He always wanted to be sort of like a famous actor, someone that entertained people. He didn't achieve that because he is a terrible actor. It was so bad and he was so, um, his accent and his acting, it was just so, just the strangest thing to watch. But the movie makes you root for him and be like, man, I wish this guy was a superstar even though he's terrible. But the thing is, he wants to be an actor because, you know, he says, I want to reach people and I want to do things. And it's, I don't know if he realizes it or not, but he does affect a ton of people. There's this whole town that adores him and goes out in life saying, you know, there are good people. There's people like George Hardy. Yeah. Yeah, well, they touch on that, like, they, everyone but him kind of talks about how great he is. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, and, and he's kind of like, well, I like my dental practice. You know, yeah. it brings me a good income and I have a comfortable <laughs> living, but I've always wanted to be in front of the camera. All the people in the town, the dental patients, you know, the townspeople, they all love him genuinely. Mm -hmm. The other group of people all yeah, love him. interesting. Not genuinely. Yeah. Ironically. And he, and he, he and yet gravitates, he gravitates towards to the that. People and it's sort of like. That. When I go to these yeah. screenings, I would never dream. Does anybody want my autograph? But anyway, we'll go over your treatment plan in just a second. So. It was endearing, completely endearing. They really embraced the people, didn't make fun of them, which is, you know, if you're going to do sort of a study, a documentary about people, that is what is entertaining about it, is their humanity and the way that they live and see things and love things or hate things. And he just embraced every single person, not judging them, just this is who they are, around a crap movie. Yeah, well, that's like the whole, the whole package with this movie. It's, it's, it's not about Troll 2. Mm -hmm. It is on the surface level, but it's about movies and people's love of movies. Right. And um, it's, it's just kind of fascinating how just 
Just a 90 minute movie about trolls can affect so many people in so many different ways. Therein lies the brilliance of best worst movie. Yes. Agreed. Best, best documentary. I was in a film. I was in a film called Troll 2. Well, boys, it's been fun watching movies with you, but I'm afraid I need to get back to work. Oh, okay. But first, I'm afraid I'm going to have to issue a citation for violating the city's open beer bottle law. Really? Even after all the fun we've had talking about Troll 2? The law's the law, boys. All right. What's going to happen is I will write you the citation. You will need to go down to City Hall to pay it. The fee will be $20. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay. I've written them the ticket. And they have agreed to pay it. What? Whoa, whoa, ah, I knew it. You're a hooker. You're an undercover hooker. Sorry, boys. I'm just doing my job as a hooker. <laughs> you bitch. You lied. You're worse than a goblin. All we wanted to do was just watch Troll 2 and Best Worst Movie. Too bad. Now it's time for you to pay us money to perform humiliating sex acts. Fine. Damn you, cop hooker. You won't get away with this. Come on, girls, you know what to do. Fuck those losers. Ah -ha! 